Hello guys, this is Karthik from EasyRAutomation.com and this is part 3 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about installation and configurations of Team Foundation Server. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 and 2 since in that part we discussed about the introduction of the Team Foundation Server itself. So let's get started. Team Foundation Server for all. So TFS, as I said before, is a huge system, but Microsoft came up with solutions to have TFS for not just big enterprise organizations, but they also support small organizations and medium-sized organizations along with individual developer teams. So for a big enterprise organizations where they have large companies and located in multiple places and many employees, they have a solution called Visual Studio Online where the Team Foundation Server itself will be deployed on the cloud in the Microsoft Azure platform and people use to create the project collections and team projects and all those things and they try to uh, connect with that particular server and manage their code checking and checkouts and the process management and whatever we discussed in the past two video of this video series. But for a smaller organization and medium-sized organization, Team Foundation Server on-premises is most common. And of course, the Team Foundation Server on-premises is something which is not an exception for enterprise organizations. Of course, they will also use it. And also the same setup we are going to use in our demonstration as well. So Team Foundation Server on-premises feature is a pretty great and most awesome feature uh, which is there from the Team Foundation Server while it is initially released and Visual Studio Online is something which, which is released recently. Along with individual developers as I said, so for individual developer there is a feature called Team Foundation Server Express. So uh, this can support until five developers and not more than that and you can collaborate and do all the operations, uh, not all the operations, at least minimum operations that can be achieved for at least uh, developing your code. So all these ecosystems are uh, being supported by the Team Foundation Server. So the installation prerequisite for the Team Foundation Server 2015, uh, these are the uh, prerequisites. So the operating systems, uh, if it is a client operating system, then you need to have uh, Windows 10, Windows 8.1, or Windows 8, or at least Windows 7 uh, service pack, uh, latest installed. And if it is going to be a server operating system, uh, that should be Windows Server 2012 R2 or Server 2012 or Windows Server 2008 R2. So this is the requirement. And the SQL Server requirement is it should be SQL Server 2014 or SQL Server 2012 with the latest update installed in that as well. And if you're going to go with a SharePoint connectivity with Team Foundation Server, then you need to have at least SharePoint Server 2013 Foundation Standard or Enterprise Edition. And the hardware requirement is something which is pretty important. And the CPU minimum dual core, it's a very, very bare minimal requirement. But if you have a uh, i7 or a very good processor, maybe your machine will be faster. So if you try to install it in your uh, machine with a huge load already, uh, your machine is going to go slow because of Team Foundation Server and because of the SQL Server running behind the scene. In the RAM, I said minimum 2 GB, that is minimum configuration, but at least uh, 8 GB to 16 GB should be good enough. And the hard disk minimum, you need to have 128 GB available disk space. So this is the installation prerequisite uh, for Team Foundation Server. And what environment I have in my machine? Of course, I have Windows Server 2012 installed, uh, which is Windows Server 2012 R2. And I have Team Foundation Server 2015. And I have SQL Server 2014 installed. And also, I have a Hyper-V virtual machines. And uh, in that, I'm running Windows 8.1 operating system. And within the Hyper-V machine, I have a test agent installed. Of course, it is not required, as I already said. Your build definition has a feature where you can select the uh, test agent deployment, and that will automatically deploy the test agent on the fly during the uh, build 
operations. So uh, that is pretty much not required, but still uh, that machine, the Hyper-V machine, which I have with Windows 8.1, I'm gonna use that for the test agent operation. And I have an Active Directory uh, for uh, the users. And uh, since I'm running Windows Server 2012 R2, this Active Directory with the users are pretty much required for me because I will be creating multiple users and mapping that users with the Team Foundation server and also with the Hyper-V machine. So whatever logins and credentials I'm doing uh, is going to be through this Active Directory. And the same Active Directory is used for the SQL server as well. So this is the environment I have in my machine uh, so that uh, we can do our Team Foundation Server course very well. All right, guys. So let's do the installation then. So let's start installing the Team Foundation Server 2015 in our machine. So I have Windows Server 2012 R2 edition installed in my machine right now. And I'm gonna use this Team Foundation Server installation in this particular server. So for doing the installation, first of all, you need to have the Team Foundation server installed. And as already said, we also need to have our SQL Server 2014 installed. So as you can see here, this particular SQL Server, which I have is Microsoft SQL Server 2014 edition. So you need to install that as well. All right, so let's go back to the Team Foundation server disk and I'm gonna install this particular Team Foundation server in my machine. So if you double click this, this wizard will start to appear. This basically takes a lot of time to load up some of the supporting files required for the installation. All right, so this has brought us to the location to be installed. So I'm going to install in my D colon of this particular machine and then I'm going to hit install. So this installation is pretty easy. So the installation part is very, very straightforward. Just one click and it will do installation for you. So once the installation is done, then we can configure our Team Foundation server. So we'll wait for the Team Foundation server to fully install and I will fast forward our video to directly to the finished page of this particular Visual Studio Team Foundation server installation. So once we're done with the installation, I took around 20 minutes for the complete installation of Team Foundation server. So once the installation is done, you can see that the Team Foundation server console opens up. And you can see that this application tier, which is uh, there, will have different kinds of options like team, project collaborations, SharePoint, web applications, reporting, lab management, etc. So similarly, there are different other options available, which we're not going to discuss about. And the most important thing which we're going to do today is going to cre create a uh, team project collaboration. So for doing that, first of all, we need to select this configure installed features. So you need to configure that and it will bring you up a configuration center with again different kinds of options like basic server, full server, application tier only, upgrade, configure team foundation server proxy, configure extensions for SharePoint product. So these are uh, very high level stuffs which we don't, we, which we're not gonna deal with, but the one which we're gonna deal with is this, the basic server. So this will walk you through very easily using this wizard. So you can just select this wizard and that bring you up the step-by-step -step navigational guide for performing the operation. So uh, it will first ask you for uh, joining to improve the Team Foundation server, which we're not gonna do right now. So I'm gonna hit no and I'm gonna hit next. And then it will ask you whether you're gonna make your Team Foundation server to use the SQL Server instance. So it will ask you whether you want to install the SQL Server Express Edition, which is there out of the box with the Team Foundation Server. Of course, you're not gonna use that. We're gonna use our existing SQL Server instance, which is installed in this particular machine. So I'm gonna select that option and I'm gonna hit next and then it will tell you which server you want to select, which is nothing but the SQL Server. Uh, my SQL Server is SQL Server 2014 and the name is Server. So I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna hit next. And then it will ask you whether you want to provide the build service settings uh, by default. It's gonna sit in this particular folder and you want to start this build agent automatically. So as of now, I'm gonna leave this unchecked and I'm gonna select the system setting, system account setting as this. 
and I'm going to leave this particular path. So this is where all your build are going to fall once you do a build of your um, applications from the team foundation servers, uh, team explorer and visual studio. All right, we'll probably talk about them in later videos. But as of now, just keep in mind that this is where all your builds will fall. All right, and then I'm going to hit next. So this will ask you, these are the configuration settings that you have provided and do you want to continue before? So you can see that the site URL of my particular team foundation server is this guy, uh, which is something but HTTP colon double slash server colon 8080 slash TFS. So this is where you can access the uh, web based TFS from your browsers. All right. And then I'm going to hit verify to see if all my prerequisites are met. It will basically take some time to fully complete its validation checking. Since my server has a domain controller and all the users are within that particular domain controller, uh, it takes a pretty small or a pretty longer time based upon uh, my machine's performance as well. All right, so system verification is done and then it's checking for the data tier. So make sure that while you install the SQL server, you have the uh, analytics service and uh, the reporting service enabled in that. And it says that the following server that uh, running the SQL server does not have the full text search features. So it is nothing but uh, this is something which I did intentionally to show you how you can uh, correct this particular problem. So I have uh, installed this already, but I have not started it yet. So we'll start that one as well. So these are the two services which I just stopped. So I'm going to run the analysis service. So reporting service also required and also the full text filter daemon launcher. So these two are also required. So you need to install that as well. And now if I do a verify, you can see that the test got passed, meaning the checking is passed. And now I can easily do a configurations for my uh, team foundation server. So if I do a configure, you can see that it's preparing the configurations, configuring the IIS server, configuring the database, creating the websites uh, and services, project collection, starting website and build agent. So everything will be completed without any problems. So let's hopefully wait and see if this really works. All right, so now the team foundation server has been installed. So there is a small issue, which is nothing but the build has uh, the team foundation server build is not configured yet. That's what uh, it's showing. So just ignore that issue for now. And you can see that the team foundation server URL is available for us right here. So if you try to click this, uh, this will open up our team foundation server web view. So you can see that it automatically locks me into the administrator mode. And that's what I am. Uh, I am the administrator of my domain. So it automatically locks me there. And this is a pretty plain and simple uh, UI for now because we don't have a project created and we don't have any team and project rooms, nothing else. This is just a plain, uh, simple team foundation server uh, web portal. Nothing else is there yet. So once you do a configurations of your project, your task and your test, all those stuffs, so you can see that the particular project will be appeared. And once you click the particular project, you can see it's work item, PBIs and all those stuffs. So that's it guys. So this is the configurations of Team Foundation server from the ground up. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.